know this that I'm strict fanboy when it when it comes to Johnny Majors. Love him. He was always super nice to me. And uh man, just just great. Okay. So he's the only guy that I've ever covered that I called coach because these guys ain't my coach. I don't call um really the only sports term I use is commissioner. If you're the commissioner of the SEC, I will say commissioner. Um, although I referred to Roy Kramer just Roy one time and Jimmy Hobbs was not happy with that. So he's the one guy I call coach. So I want to ask you this question. Would he have won? His estate's on sale now. Would he have won a national championship at Tennessee? Providing a backdrop for those younger ones that don't know. Did Philip Fulmer go after his job while Johnny Majors was having a heart attack? Uh, well, as Johnny Major goes, well, Dave, let me tell you something. They are working on my front. And that bleepity bleep was stabbing a knife in my back. And so, yes, he thinks so. Um, but I don't think it's quite that simple. So let me ask you, his estate's on sale. Would Johnny Majors have won a national title at Tennessee had he not been replaced by Philip Fulmer, who overtly and... I have no problem with ambition. I don't hold it against him. Went after his job. He made like a hundred phone calls to the president's office when the course over the course of two weeks. Caleb, we work together all the time. I don't call you a hundred times in two weeks. No, I you don't. Do see, not. I, I, you don't even get that many emails. I mean, all, all of our contacts are less than a hundred a week. Um, so clearly, he was out to get the job. Would he have won a national title at Tennessee if not for the change? so this is it's, really hard to say because like it's one of the hardest questions of my career to be real yeah, because okay like let's take the national title tennessee one in 98 former as a program one runner is not like to me national title caliber as head coach it's just he had the right staff and all the talent at the right time in 98 got, so and got was, breaks and got breaks and got breaks yes so the question with majors becomes okay does majors what 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 led to Tennessee's 98 national title? Former getting the recruiting heist of the century in Peyton Manning, which in turn led to a lot of high profile athletes wanting to commit to Tennessee afterward because Peyton Manning was there. And the truth of the matter is that was because of David Cutcliffe. If if former say former is Johnny Major's offensive coordinator. Does Tennessee really land Peyton Manning in 1994, Dave? Because we know that he committed to David Cutcliffe, not Philip Fulmer. That's a pretty well. well but if he that. get but if he gets another Heath Schuler, they do something different. I see where you're going, and this is the conversation I want to have. I love it. And, I, and I love Fulmer, these conversations, and I hope you guys do too in the message board. So, like, and, and the other right. question is, okay, look, let's talk about that. Those the, the teams that Fulmer was offensive coordinator for in '89 and '90. I mean, you talk about. The only teams that the late 90s teams can, that, that could compete with the late 90s teams in terms of talent was that 89 and 90 offense. Those offenses were loaded with talent. You know that, Dave, more than I do. And well, I don't mean, okay, but don't forget 91 and 92, those Notre Dame matchups. That was the most amazing collection of talent. I've ever right. seen 89 to 92, that little run right there, that four year mm -hmm. run. The defense wasn't on par with the late 90s defense, I don't think, but the offense definitely may have been better weapon wise than it than was. It was. And, yeah. And so Fulmer was dealing, Fulmer had an arsenal of weapons at his hand. So what the, the question I'm asking is if Fulmer had stayed along as offensive coordinator, by the way, he wouldn't have, he would have taken a head coaching job somewhere else. Okay. Let's just put that out there, but say he does stay at Tennessee as offensive coordinator. I don't, does, think, he I don't think he would have actually. Okay. You're right. I don't think he would have. I think he would have waited five, six years to Johnny major for Johnny majors to eventually retire. Because he was well, so old, or he would have hated majors. But that that sidetracks us. Go ahead. So, does he win a championship? Continue in that path. No, I'll because I, no, because I don't think Fulmer is as good of an offensive coordinator as David Cutcliffe, and that's where I was going with that. And I don't think Fulmer could tailor his offense going from tailoring it to Heath Schuler to a Peyton Manning to a team. Mark. I mean, I don't think he could do what David Cutcliffe could do as an offensive coordinator. I'm just going to say, I think Fulmer actually as an as an OC underachieved with the talent he had in 89 and 90 there. I'm going to say it. I think he underachieved with the talent he had in 89 and 90. He would certainly argue with that as he and I've had this discussion, but. Um, <laughs> so do you agree I, with me on that? <laughs> no, he, 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 
thinks he was an excellent offense coordinator and he doesn't like that that's left off his resume as a benchmark. But that's another – Nine to six against Alabama in 1990. That's, I, I know. I, that's, I didn't say that was my opinion. Okay. <laughs> but it, here's, here's my thing with, with majors. I think, unfortunately, that the relationships with the boosters got too sour. I think that part of that was ego, and I think part of that was alcohol-related. So it breaks my heart to say this, but if he hangs around at Tennessee till 96, 97, I, as Travis points out, had five years left, which, yeah, is just what I was thinking. Best years were behind him. I'm afraid that's the case. And... Um, I know another. I know another coach that won a national title much more recently. That um, I think alcohol got in the way and it affects you in recruiting. There are a lot of grandmas that they smell that on your breath, even if you just had a pop on the plane going to their place, and that's bad. I know of a coach that won a national championship recently that was known to show up at a prospect's uh, house partially intoxicated. And was asked to leave. Why do I feel like I know the coach you're talking about? Yeah, don't say it. So, <laughs> all right. So, I think that that would have been a factor. And back then, you didn't get that addressed. You just rolled with it. And it was just a man being a man. Like, you know, Paul Bear Bryant. You know, he used to he used to get really intoxicated with the media when they would have the Skyriders tour. So instead of the SEC champion, uh, the SEC media days, they would all hop on a plane and fly from campus to campus. And they'd have pops with Paul Bear Bryant afterwards and pick his brain. And he would go through four or five whiskeys. So that's just the way things were in the early nineties and before. Fortunately, I think that our, our society has looked at that, especially kids my age. And they're like, uh, I don't think I want to drink alcohol. I'm like, cool. So, um, I don't think he would have. And it really, really breaks my heart to say that. But yeah. that, that still being said, he he absolutely should be beloved because he got Tennessee to a spot that they could win a championship. And he's one of their best players all, of all time. And don't forget his brother, for those young ones out there that don't know, his brother was an assistant on the staff and killed in the train wreck. So, you know, he, he's got a lot. Of, he had a lot of emotional ties and the majors had a lot of emotional ties. So, to just discount them because he didn't win a national title, I think would be unfair and short-sighted. But do I think he would have won a national title? The only way he wins a national title, former took over in 92. The only way he wins a national title, if that next year, 93, he strikes gold. After that, I think it would have started to erode. And that 93 team may have been good enough to do it, to be fair. Yes. That 93 team was loaded with talent. I think he was loading up for one last run. I think it's like, I know you gamble on sports. I, I like to throw dice. So if I, whether I'm up or down at the end of a casino trip, I'll make one last run and I'll have however many dollars and this is it. And I'm going to play for an hour unless I'm doing really good or I lose really fast. And that's it. That's my last run. I think he was loaded up for his last run in 93 and that did get it taken did away from him. It's like when those 08 Celtics got together. They were loading up for one championship run. They were all towards the end of their careers and they knew this was their chance. I want to say this in defense of John of I want to say this one thing in defense of Philip Fulmer in things in and what got taken away from Johnny Majors. I, I want to be fair here from the other side to give the perspective. I uh, I know some people in Knoxville. I didn't live there long, but I, I I remember talking to people just as a college kid, and I have heard a lot of rumors. Dave, take it what you want, but I've heard a lot of rumors that Fulmer was really looking at a lot of offers after that 89 and 90 years when Tennessee was back-to-back -back SEC champions. And you can imagine he was a hot commodity as a head coach at that point, as a, as a prospect, because he his off at when he right when he becomes offensive coordinator, that's when Tennessee turns it around from five and six to back-to-back -back SEC titles. So you can imagine the type of offers he's probably getting from other schools. I had heard a lot of rumors that Johnny Majors asked Fulmer to stay along and said, this will be my last contract. And then 1992 comes around and you and I know the story. Big Arch Caravan comes in 92. And what is he doing? Railing against the administration for not extending his contract. 
and complaining about the fact that they wouldn't extend his contract after he had reportedly told a lot of the staff that this was his last contract. And that, so we have to be fair to Fulmer on that side too. And I mean, I did see a comment that said Fulmer, there's a rumor that Fulmer sabotaged those three games when he lost as offensive coordinator, when majors came back in 92, you know, when they lost to Arkansas, South Carolina, and yes. Alabama. people guys go back and watch those games. Fulmer didn't sabotage that. Fulmer's not the reason that Tennessee allowed Arkansas to score a touchdown, recover an onside kick, and then kick a game-winning field goal. That had nothing to do – Fulmer was not doing anything during that whole time. He was the offensive coordinator. He couldn't have done anything to cause that. So I, I just want to be fair to Fulmer on that front. I don't think he was purposely trying to lose games for Tennessee to get the head coaching job when Johnny Majors came back at all. No. I, I, I mean, listen, Philip Fulmer likes Philip Fulmer number one. Most of us do. Um, and he likes the University of, uh, of Tennessee number two. But he would never, ever, ever, ever um, sabotage a game. Just like I don't think Tennessee's defensive players sabotaged a game because you know, the Jeremy Banks situation. I just don't think that happens. I don't think people no. do that. I think people have too much pride to get to that point. Elias brings up a really good point. Maybe Brandon Stewart still ends up in Knoxville. So he has a Heath Shuler type of career. It's not a Manning. But that's a winnable one in terms of having a guy that that could potentially lead you to a championship. Um, and for those Great. that don't know, Shadow Wolf points out uh, Majors got sick in the hospital and Fulmer took over. Yes. Yeah, so what happened? Like a series of things had to happen. I don't want to turn this into a history lesson, but he basically had a. And I've talked to Mike Strange about this, who's longtime Knoxville News Central writer. Like eight things all had to happen for Majors to lose that job. One of them, he made a bunch of boosters mad there was the contract issue caleb that, that you mentioned there was the heart attack there was the fact that they did so well we was, when he was in the hospital there was the fact that he rushed back if he hadn't rushed back the job would have still been his if he had just taken the year off i've been told you may lose former in that regard there were like eight things that have fall into place so it's a little bit of a heartbreaking thing and i know i'm probably going back a little bit before some of your all time but um, you know, seeing the state sell kind of hit me a little bit, a, a little bit hard. And, um, you know, I, I, it's listen, listen, there are some things I would like to have the money to <laughs> to bid on. But when a pit Panthers liquor decanter is going for seven hundred dollars, I'm going to have to take a hard pass on that. Yeah. And that's also a little given what we know about Johnny Major's troubles. It's a little <laughs> disturbing to buy that. But Dave, my question is: It was I, a I mean, different world. I can remember getting whiskey glasses for Christmas presents for from companies. I get my dad whiskey glasses every now and then. For, but <laughs> sure, family, I got it from my employer. Well, Dave, have you ever seen? There's an old news clipping, and I think it's in Tennessee. It's an old local news story on. It's hilarious. It was making the rounds on TikTok about two months ago, where. They were talking about when, when a lot of states didn't have anti-drunk driving laws until the 70s or 80s. There was just no nothing to address it. So states started addressing it in the 70s. And I think it's a rural town in Tennessee. And you have these guys being like, pretty soon we're going to be a communist country. You can't open a cold beer when you're trying to when, right before you're about to drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. One for the road. I mean, that was that was just a common thing. I can I can remember my dad having one between his legs because we didn't have cup holders back in the day. <laughs> I mean, that was that was no big deal. And I, I will just say I'll share this story with you because I, I know that this is a fact because I've got a family member that worked there that major showed up to one public event in a, a car dealership. And he was very moody when he got in and went in the back, had a couple of pops came out and he was like Superman with the crowd and engaging with with this car dealership and these and these uh, boosters and every and everything, but when he left, he took his car that was given to him by the company parking lot, uh, the the dealership, and he hit one car that was parked so hard that it turned into like accordions, and eight cars got actually hit because one car kept hitting another and another and another. <laughs> so, including his car, there were like almost double digit. 10 cars involved in an accident that he created. Uh, let's, uh, before we get to something stupid, stupid that we left out last week, and I'm mad at Caleb and I'm mad at me. 
Hoghead says, how do you guys rate Fulmer's coaching performance with the 93 team? Caleb? Well, Before we get to our stupid comment. I I actually think he did a pretty good job with the 93 team. The, ten, the Penn State game, every, let's not forget that that Citrus Bowl were, that was the one blowout loss, but that was where everybody knew Heath Schuler was going to the NFL. And so it was kind of the distraction of his last bowl game. And so that was an issue. Their one actual loss that year was at Florida. And I think that was Faxgate year, wasn't it? Wasn't that where the uh, where Ron Zook got a hold yes. of Tennessee's playbook right before <laughs> the game? And Tennessee still almost won that game. <laughs> so, I mean, that's – you, you got to give Fulmer some credit for that one. So, I think, again, maybe Fulmer should have been a little bit more secure in his documents and his documentation. <laughs> but, yes, that would uh, – I, I forget how does the story go, Dave? Someone, an assistant coach for Tennessee, faxed the playbook to Ron Zook and the offensive game plan. Yeah, a little before my time, but basically, Tennessee's playbook was sent to Gainesville via fax. Yes. So and I don't know. I don't know how in the world your career continues at, the, at that point. And no, I, I agree. Don't. I mean, that to me is every bit as bad as what I was talking about that Alabama baseball coach gambling on his own team. As a matter oh. of fact, that's worse. Oh, it's worse. It's what uh, Dave Clawson had the same issue a few years ago. Remember when Dave Clawson, apparently an assistant, I believe was probably on Petrino's payroll. It sounds like Petrino was hiring an assistant for Dave Clawson to send him Dave Clawson's playbooks at Wake Forest. <laughs> well, a lot of people think, uh, so Zook was opening at a position at Florida, which is why he did it, if I remember correctly. But a, a similar situation happened with Doug Dickey, where he went to Florida right after. A lot of people wondered if he uh, threw the last game. <laughs> 